What's going on YouTube? Michael Tron TV here. Uh, ain't got the glasses on today, trying not to look like such a fucking nerd. Anyways, um, I wanted to tell a quick story, kind of bored here. Um, wanted to tell a story about, um, uh, last time I was locked up, <clears throat> watching a dude get his head beat in with a plastic tray. <clears throat> now, I told, I know I told a story, um, from when I was younger, watching from the room while, uh, two kids uh fought it out or one of them was beating them with a tray one of them was beating the other one with a tray um but this one was a whole lot more close and this one was a whole lot more vivid um i'm gonna keep this video short because um i'm just trying to get some new subscribers so um anyways um it all started out over a um over a uh what do they call those things the the vegan wraps like the um instead of bread they would get these uh they like tortilla wraps but they were on the vegan trays comes with the wrap and the peanut butter and all that fun stuff anyways um dude owed a wrap out over some coffee or something and um we'll call the dude the 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 wrap out his name's Jay um and um so what happened was, is he basically kind of punked the guy down that gave him the coffee because he was, you know, um, I guess deemed to be soft in the cell. It was an eight man cell. We stayed in there 24 seven. There was a, there was like a little, um, like eating area and then there was the cell area and we never got to go out unless it was to go to court or something like that. They had basketball courts. They had a rec, they had a whole rec area that you would walk to to go to visitation or walk through to get the visitation but um i was in there mostly in the winter time so they would never take us out there um and i heard they didn't even take you out there in the summertime really so um anyways back to the story i think i know, i mean in that small of an area even though it was like a private deal you knew everybody knows what's going on um <laughs> And he kept bucking him on the wrap because he would get a wrap. I think that he got wraps um, on every tray or at least two trays a day. Um, so basically what happened one morning was, um, you know, I could tell that the kid was getting pissed because he was bucking him every time. Um, so we'll call him the kid that gave the dude, Jay, the coffee um, <clears throat> and never got his wrap. So, um, Jay would always, um, he would always, like, take forever at breakfast time because he would be, like, the last one to wake up. He would sit there forever, and we were, like, the last block to get fed, um, and then they would stop. The COs and the trustees would stand there while the trustee would eat his food, and then probably about 10 minutes later, they would start back taking trays up. So, we would be the last to get served and the first to get picked up. <laughs> Um, so they, uh, like I said, Jay was always the last one to get down off his bunk. He was on a top bunk, um, to get his tray. He would always wait for the last one. I guess it was because it was a vegan tray. Um, I don't know. I don't know what his reasoning was. It really doesn't matter. But, um, the kid that had fronted out the coffee, um, and it wasn't much coffee. It was probably like maybe a couple scoops. Um, this morning he was already up had his shit like i i could tell something was going on because he had his shit kind of put together but it wasn't like 100 percent obvious that he was packing up um but he had his shit pretty well put together like you know he knew that somebody else was going to be getting his stuff for him um so he's up there and mind you i noticed all this stuff because i'm not sleeping worth a fuck in this jail because I've been in here for a long ass time and I'm still coming off of methadone. Like the methadone withdrawals, I don't care what anyone tells you unless you've been on methadone for as long, over 10 years, um, and then automatically just detox, cold turkey in jail. You cannot tell me that after six, seven, eight weeks that you still are not sleeping right. Cause you're not. Um, and I've, I know other people that have told, that have went through the same shit. But that's why I notice shit, because I'm already up way before everybody else is. I'm seeing shit that most people ain't seeing. Um, so this kid's the first one to get his tray. 
he walks all the way to the back because you got like three, you got like three picnic tables. Um, one is right next to the window where the guards would actually stand after they would give us our trays. They would stand by that window and let the trustee eat his tray right out there in the hallway. And um, then they like yeah, and like I said, a few minutes later they would start picking up our trays and get ours first. <clears throat> so he goes all the way to the back. All the way up against the wall, away from the window, um, and he's his tray, and he does it quick. And, um, you know, looking on it in hindsight, he was just basically sitting there waiting uh, on his chance. And Jay, the guy that owed him a rap, still bucked him today. And um, I think it was more of a, um, of a pride issue, because it was just a fucking rap. I mean, it, it, dude didn't deserve this over that, but... Um, he sits down. As soon as he sits down, the kid gets up, walks past him, because Jay had sat down, at because he was the last one, he sat down on the table that was closest to the window, um, and closest to the, you know, the tray slot and everything, and what we would do is our stack our trays up right there, and then when they would come, somebody would go hand them out to the slot. Um... So he walks up there like he's about to sit his tray down, makes it past Jay. Jay ain't paying him no mind. And he makes it past him, and he cuts his shot, look over his shoulder, and he takes off on the back of his head with that freaking tray. Like, boom! Man, I know that dude saw, saw stars. And he was supposed a gang member, man. Uh, some gang that's around here. <laughs> I ain't even gonna put them out there, but they're they're like white gangster disciples. I'm not gonna say their fucking real name. They're like IGD, but they got an actual name around here that I'm not even gonna say on here because I know some of them. Um, maybe that's a video for another day. Anyways, he wasn't so tough, and uh, I mean, because I know why the kid did it. He probably wouldn't have stood a chance if he had of just you know, wanted to fucking take him, you know, because you can fight, in, you can fight in Burkitaba all day long, because you can hear the, the COs coming from a mile away, even though the floors almost have got, like, springs on them, so they can hear if somebody's fighting all the way up and booking, most of the time they don't give a fuck, unless they see it when they're doing their rounds, they'll just let it happen, there's no cameras in the pod, there's nothing, all they have is these little, the, the, the ground is actually made, because I was try, I was PM trustee for a while, and uh, one of the COs told me that the um, the floor in the jail, you could hear it. You could, like, stomp on it. And it would be like, boom, boom, boom. Like, it was hollow below. Um, but it was still, like, concrete. It was weird. But, um, like, if you jumped off the top bunk, you could hear it. But if somebody starts scrapping in there, you can really hear it then. Um, and it's so that they can hear it up in booking. And um, somebody once told me that they had, like, a storage area below the jail. I don't know. Um... But anyways, he hit him in the back of the head with the tray. Boom! And he's just like, he's stunned. And he's just like, he didn't even knock his glasses off. He had glasses on, they just went flying into his damn shit. And um, from what I remember, he kind of tried to stand up, and dude hits him again. Boom! Right in the side of the head. And by this time, now this is the second time I got maced in fucking Burt Catawba. By this time, you got the police standing there, radioing that shit and telling them, Inmate, put that tray down! Inmate, put that tray down! I'm gonna spray you! Blah, 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 blah. Dude was out by the second one. And uh, and he he's sitting there, he's about to start taking off on him again, but with his fist. Like, dude was fucking pissed over that damn, um, that rap, that vegan rap. Over a tortilla. Tortilla shell. Um, I guess he was wanting to make that swole extra tasty. Um, anyways, um, he starts beating the brakes off this dude, like, while he's out. And we're all just like, you know, I'm, I'm at the fucking back, and I'm like, oh my god. And then they start damn grabbing that fucking big old can of what looks like bear mace, but it's just, it's fucking OC spray. They stick that bitch in there, and my ass cuts around the side. And into the bunk area, but it don't fucking matter when you're in there. Wherever you're at in that pod, the pod next to it, the pod across the hallway from it, 
When they spray that shit, it's over for you, man. You better fucking wrap up real quick. And um, that thing about it was, I didn't even think about wrapping up until it was too late. And this was the second time this shit had happened. You know, and, and I had realized fucking, if you wrap up before, it's a whole lot better and it doesn't get on your fucking skin. But anyways, they unloaded that fucking OC spray. And then the way they get into the door, into the blocks on um, it, at this at this specific, specific confinement center I was at, um, they have to, it's like old as fuck, man. It's crazy. They had to put a key in this box and then the box opens and you hear, you can hear it. It wakes you up, man. Um, and then they have to put another key in there and turn it. And then it goes, bang, and then like the, whenever it's buzzing, you know, the doors are opening. <clears throat> um, so I guess the goon squad had made it down there and you know, you can hear that. Bang, and, uh, they're like, everybody on the ground, everybody on the ground. And by this time, I'm pretty sure he didn't stop beating him because that mace was really starting to take effect. Um, especially since he was right there and they, I'm sure they just unloaded it all on him mostly, but we still got all the residuals, but, um, you know, I probably, probably could have named this video the second time I got maced, um, in jail, which both times were not due to anything I had done, just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was, that was the end of that, um, the little, Little soft young dude versus the big tough gangbanger. And the gangbanger didn't come out too too tough on this one, boys. But, uh, you know, that's that just goes to show you that, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover at all, man. I mean, this kid took off. And this kid wasn't in there for nothing serious. But I, I would be willing to bet since he did that shit right in front of the police, he caught another charge. Probably assault with a weapon or something. Assault with a deadly weapon the way he was hitting him, man. Um... Because, I mean, when you do it right in front of the police, they don't even need somebody to uh, to say whether they're going to press charges or not. Because then they got witnesses and shit. So, I, I dare say, I never seen that kid again after that. Because um, I'd already been trustee and lost my trustee position. Um, I had never seen that kid after that. But, um, you know, there's no telling. I don't know. I don't know what happened to him. But I know that the gangbanger got his ass whooped pretty good. You know, he tried to stand up, and if that kid hadn't took that second blow, he might have got he might have gotten his ass beat. But you know, luckily for him, he did. Anyways, y'all, I got a lot more content like this. Um, I need some subscribers, man. So if y'all would share this everywhere. But until next time, Micatron TV.